let's get started. Oops. The screen share is still on? Yes, okay. So um, I'll quick introduce ourselves. Well, I'll introduce us quickly because some people have already been and met us in our other sessions. Um, so my name is Chris Kopanes, Nigani uh, I'm the Gawich Tutu Anishinaabe coordinator for the Waking Up Ojibwe initiative, uh, Anishinaabe Moda initiative. So, and then we have our manager, Shannon King, and we also have our Gawich Tutu Anishinaabe assistant, Bridget. Um, and so those are the main three of us. And then we also work with three translators, fluent speakers, and an illustrator, a young man from uh, Nakachiwana and First Nation. So last time in our last session, uh, we talked about Gan Wing, the sounds of the language. Uh, we talked a little bit about spelling in the double vowel. And we also talked about the Anishinaabe and alphabet and how it differs from the English alphabet. Then we talked about uh, Ikidonan words. So animate and inanimate nouns, diminutive nouns and locative nouns. I'll review those really quickly today. Um, but if you did miss our last session, you can watch it on YouTube, uh, here on our YouTube channel. Oops, uh oh, there we go. Um, you can watch it right here on our YouTube channel. And then last session, we also started working on verbs. So we started with BII verbs and how they are used in their most basic form. We stick with command form and basic A form. So as not to get too complicated, this is mostly for beginners or as a refresher if you're still a learner. Um, and it's also really good for fluent speakers who are wanting to learn double vowel system or have just how to spell things that they've known their whole lives. So today um, I'll review the sounds and the words really quickly. Oops, I forgot to change that. And then we'll work on BAIs, not BIIs. And then we'll have feedback questions. Um, there are games and activities, so I'm gonna be asking you guys to participate. Um, I have Shannon on call out duty this time, so if nobody answers, she's gonna start calling people out and trying to get an answer out of people. Right. Okay. Um, if you are comfortable with that, maybe you could like in the chat, just say you can call on me at any point. And that would be really helpful. Okay, so let's get started, actually. Um, so, Anishinaabe Mu'an alphabet, just as a quick refresher, uh, we have all of our vowels, so we have seven vowels, and then we have the consonants, we have a glottal stop, and you'll notice that some of the consonants are also doubled up, and those are considered their own letters. And then for sounds, we have um, comparisons between Anishinaabe Mu'an and English. This is straight from the Minnesota People's Dictionary, Ojibwe People's Dictionary, sorry. Um, and it's very similar to how we talk in our territory and how others talk in their territories. If you're not sure on pronunciation, you should always talk to somebody from your community or from your area to help you clarify how you say things. Um, but this is just to help you get a basis down. Okay, and we have a copy of our sound chart there. I didn't put the song this time, so if you want that, you can look at the last YouTube video, though. Okay, so noun refresher. We have animate and inanimate nouns. Um, this does not mean dead or alive. It doesn't mean it has a spirit and it doesn't have a spirit. It's just a, an assignment that has been given um, through linguistics, okay? So animate nouns can either be singular or plural. Uh, ikwe is a woman. And then for plural, you would say ikwe wuk. And inanimate nouns, makak is one box. Makakun is more than one box, okay? And plurals will vary depending on the word. Um, it's just something that you learn as you go along. Um, I find that as a learner, I've slowly been able to like figure it out as I go. Uh, I can now say, okay, it wouldn't be oog, it would be wug. 
right? Or it would be un instead of one. And so you just figure that out as you go. If you make a mistake, nobody's gonna like crucify you for it. They're just gonna help you and gently correct you. Okay. Um, last time we also talked about diminutive nouns. Uh, so how to make something small, right? So zaga igan is a lake. Zaga igans is a small lake. Makak is a box. Makakuns is a small box. Mikana is a road. Mikananes is a small road. So a lot of words already have a uh, diminutive built in, like makuns, which is a baby bear, or animusheds, which is a puppy. So there's three different um, suffixes that you can use to make something diminutive. That's ons, uns, or ains. Um, again, you just learn which one to use as you go along. And if you're not sure, you can always check out the Ojibwe People's Dictionary and they have it built right into most of the nouns. It's the same thing with locative nouns. Um, you can turn a noun into a place. So Zaga Igun is a lake. Zaga Iganing is at, in, or on the lake. And whether you're at, in, or on the lake is dependent on what you're doing, right? So if you're swimming in the lake or you're boating on the lake, right? So it just depends and that's the context in the language. Again, if you're not sure which locative ending to use, I would look at the Ojibwe People's Dictionary just to um, determine which one it is. But if you don't have a fluent speaker nearby, if you do have a fluent speaker right there, you should always ask them first. Okay. Uh, Anishinaabe Mwen verbs. So we have four types of verbs in the language. B-I-I, B-A-I, B-T-I, and B-T-A's. Um, and in order to demonstrate just basically how different they are from each other, a B-I-I is an object or a description of an object or a um, abstract concept. So something like Miskwa, it is red, it just is. It's not affecting anything else or doing anything else to anything. A VAI is an animate subject, animate subject doing something, okay? So uh, Miskwaze is she or he is red, okay? And it's not affecting anything else. So she or he is red. And then you get into BTIs. Miskwadisin, she or he dyes it red. So something inanimate, they're dyeing it red. Okay, so this is when a subject affects an object. And then BTAs, she or he is doing something to him or her. So the subject is affecting an animate object this time. Okay, animate to animate. So Miskwadis is she or he dyes him or her red. So that's just a quick review of that. So last time we talked about uh, VIIs in depth. So this time we're gonna focus on DAIs. So these types of verbs describe an action being done by someone or something that is animate. Um, it doesn't always have to be a person, it might be a mineral or it might be something else that's animate doing or being, right? The way that they're existing. So the main verb form is always in third person to start and has to be conjugated to change from there. So some common examples that you guys might see as you're learning, um, these are probably the most common verbs that are learned in say an elementary school kind of classroom grade school thing. So it's probably the words that we learned first, right? So bimose, she or he is walking. Nematebe, she or he is sitting, and Giyose, she or he is hunting. So those are just three examples. Um, but I don't know if you guys all remember that old verbo bingo kind of looking thing that we, they used to have back in the day when I was young. Um, we'd play that all the time in, in grade school and that's what we would learn is those main third person verb forms. So to start, we'll start with VAI command form, um, command conjugations. So um, 
these are if you're telling somebody to do something, okay, you're kind of ordering them around almost. So VAI verbs can end in a vowel, an N, or an M, okay? So if they end in a vowel, you would use these two charts. If they end in an N, you would use these two charts. If they end in an M, you would use these two charts. Okay, a lot of them are similar. So if you remember basic ones, say you memorize the vowel ones first, you accidentally put an N ending on a, on a vowel, nobody's gonna like get mad at you for it. At least you're trying, right? So we want you guys to try. That's the main part. So in order to conjugate them, you would take a verb uh, that ends in a vowel, we'll start with. So namatabe. Namatabe is a common verb for everybody. So to change it into you sit down, namatabin. You add that N on the end, namatabin. And as I'm going, I want you guys to try and repeat them. You don't have to turn your mic on, but try and repeat them to yourselves so you're getting the language and the feeling for it as you're going. So, namatabin, you sit down. Gego namatabikain, you don't sit down. Okay? So you're taking the word and you're plugging it into these blank spaces. Okay? So, namatabin, gego namatabikain. Namatabig. You all sit down. You all don't sit down. Let's sit down. Uh, let's not sit down. So you might not use these negative ones as often as you would use the positive ones. Okay, you're more likely to say, uh, let's go for, let's walk instead of let's not sit down, right? or let's stand instead of let's not sit down. So you might stick with just the positive commands. And if you're gonna do that, then you get these three down and you're good to go. Okay. So if you have a verb that ends in an N now, for command form, uh, so to conjugate that to say, you lie down, and then you don't lie down, Gego jingishin game. Gego jingishin game. You all lie down. Jingishinuk. Jingishinuk. You all don't lie down. Gego jingishin gegon. Let's lie down. Jingishin da. Let's not lie down. Gego jingishin zida. If you guys have any questions too, just pop up and stop me at any point. Okay. So if your verb ends in an M for command form, you're going to drop the M off the end of the verb okay, and plug it into these spaces. So minwendum is the verb. So what I would do is drop the N, or sorry, drop the M and add the N. So minwendum becomes minwendan, which is kind of an awkward thing to say. It's like, be happy, right? You're commanding someone to be happy. But it's just for the example, the purposes of the example. So gego minwendan gain, minwendamok, gego minwendan gegon, minwendan da, Gego minwain dun zida. I'm not keeping an eye on the chat, but I can see you guys smiling every once in a while, and I'm wondering what's going on over there. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to move into a form conjugations. I haven't put all of them on here. So in the Shnabim, when there are what we call the seven people, right? Um, but I've only put four of them on here because when you are just beginning, seeing that many conjugations can be really um, overwhelming. So I just focus on the main four that you would probably use the most often when you're teaching. So it's the same thing here. If your verb ends in a vowel, an N or an M, okay? So if your verb ends in a vowel, we're gonna use bit again. 
Okay, we'll use pneumatobia as your example. For I and U conjugations, you're going to drop any short vowel off the end. Okay, so it's going to become ninnamatab. Ninnamatab. Okay. For negative, gawin ninnamatabisim. Gawin ninnamatabisim. So some people will say seem, and some people will say see. Okay, so um, when I went to school in Minnesota, I learned to say seem, and then when I moved home, I had to change it up and switch to see. So some people will say seen, some will say see. Neither of them are incorrect, they're both correct. Just depends where you're from. Okay, so ninnamatab, I am sitting. I am not sitting. Ginnamatab, you are sitting. Ginnamatab. Kawin ginnamatabisi. I am sorry, you are not sitting. So when you get to she or he, because the verb is already in third person form, you don't need to change it. So it's just nimatabi. She or he is sitting. Gawin namatabis. Sorry, going with the busy. She is not sitting. She or he. Namat the wog. They are sitting. Going namat the busy wog. They are not sitting. So you might not say all of these. You might not use all of them in your everyday conversations. But it's good to know um, the conjugation so you can uh, make sentences, especially if you're trying to write a story or you know, tell a, a little or make songs, you know, that's really helpful for that. So if you have a verb that ends in an N, I'm going to use Shingashin again as the example. Um, it's the same thing, you're just plugging it into the blank spaces. So Ninjingashin, Ninjingashin, Gawin Ninjingashin Z. So I am lying down, I am not lying down. Gijingashin, Gawin Gijingashin Z. Jingashin, Gawin Jingashin Z. Jingashinug, Gawin Jingashin Z. Wug. And then if your verb ends in an M, I'm going to use Minwaindam again as the example. So, Niminwaindam, Gawin Niminwaindam Z. Gimin Wingdom Gawin Gimin Wingdom Z Min Wingdom Gawin Min Wingdom Z Min Wingdom Wook Gawin Min Wingdom Z Wook So you'll notice um, on the negative form right here. This double asterisk means that the M is going to change to an N on the root verb. So it's no longer minwaindum, it becomes minwaindum. Okay, gawin min, minwaindum z. Does anybody have any questions about those? I can see you shaking here. Oh, yep. Yeah. So if you were with us in the last class, um, we had the uh, conjugation pieces uploaded for you. Um, again, we're going to have the VAI ones. So if you had a chance to make them, you could do that. Um, they are available on our website if you want to set for yourself. Or you can um, download the Smart Notebook document. Oops. Oh, no. So all the way up to the first one. So uh, with these, what you're doing is creating sentences. Okay, so these are all cloned, so I can just drag them down. So if I wanted to say, don't cry, okay, giggle, Molly, I got my name in King. Okay, and then what you like to do 
is rewrite the whole sentence here so that you can see how it would look in sentence form as well. So this is the part where we're going to start picking on people. Okay, so I'm going to get you guys to build the sentences. So you all don't be sad. How would you say that? Uh, okay, cool. Um, Mane and Dam. Mane and Dam. Cake mm. on. I've I've heard cake like without the O N, but cake Yeah. Cake on, Mane and Dam. Cake on. <laughs> you put it I said it nice. Oh, okay, go, man, and the mokay gun. Oh, nice. Says a little different word in my hair. Kagon? Do I pass? <laughs> <laughs> Did I pass? Um, so if we look back at our chart. So this is a command sentence. Can we go all the way back? There we go. So don't you all be sad, right? Gago, manendum, gagon. Don't you all? Okay. So that That would change just a little bit. So Big, you said it different though. What did you say? Gego manen da mo kegun. Gego manen da mo kegun. I'm I'm a first language speaker, by the way, guys. I'm, I'm just in here to listen, basically. So. <laughs> He's just in here to boss me around. <laughs> Our good friend, Big. <laughs> so Big works with us at um, Seven Generations. Uh, and he's actually doing a talk tomorrow, if you guys have time to tune in. Uh, that if you guys got four up. hours to spare. What? I like to talk. <laughs> I'm long-winded. <laughs> All right. So for the next one, we have she or he is not crying. How would we conjugate that? She or he's not crying. Okay, I can see Nanatig's typing in the chat. Oops, Galeen. Mole. See. So, depending on if you're a seer or a seener, right, you might have an N right there. Um, in our territory, we tend to stick with C, so that's what I'll put there. All right, good job. Okay, next one. You all fall down. So you're playing that game with the kids, you know, and I can't remember what it's called. You all fall down. <laughs> How would you say that? London Bridge, yes. <laughs> Ungeschin. Which ending do we need? Um. Log. <clears throat> Okay, so wug would be they all fall down. 
book is you all fall down, so it's a command. So Bungashinuk, you all fall down. So it would end up looking like Bungashinuk. Now I know we're making kind of weird sentences sometimes that you might not actually use, um, but it's just a good exercise to, to get you um, familiar with the endings and beginnings. Yeah. I am not sad. I'm not sad. You're in denial. How would you say it? <laughs> Gawin. Gawin. Ne. Ne. Manendam. Zin. Gawin the manenda zin. Type here at the same time. There we go. So um, Kevin is from down south, so he might throw an N on the end there. I think I heard it. But just depending where you're from, you might throw that in on or not. Kevin all right, next one. Let's not be sad. How would you conjugate that? Let's not be sad. Oh, when I am them. Oh, wait, Gego, not Gego. Gego. Mane dam Sida. Sida, yeah. You go to Kate. Mane dam Sida. Good job. Okay. Next one. They are falling down. People, people are falling down. They. <laughs> what to say? They are falling down. Bangishanuk. Okay. So Bangishanuk would be a command. How would you make it a form? <laughs> mm. I don't know. So uh, <laughs> not to, not to put it in the, in the chat there. Bangishanuk. Bangishanuk. That's what I was saying. Just not very well. <laughs> oh, you were, you were trying to say that? I heard Bangishanuk. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I should have written it. I should have written it. <laughs> there we go. All right. How would I say, you are sad? I need to get some happier verbs in here, I think. <laughs> you are sad. Gimane and Dam. Gimane and Dam. Gimane and Dam. Just like that. Okay. They are not crying. They are not crying. Gawin. 
Mauve. Sí. Oh, yeah, no va a hablar anyway. Sí, <laughs> That's <bug. okay>. Either <laughs> way works. So you can yeah. grab both of these or you can grab the whole one. Okay. Gawin, Mauve, sí, work. Okay, those ones are for later. All right, so what I'm going to do, I this. Okay, so that was just a little bit of building, and I'm going to put that up on the, the smart document up on our website so you guys can download that and use that if you want. Um, the software, the limited edition of the software is free if you want to use it. If you work for a school board, you probably already have it. All right, so we're gonna play some Kahoot. So on your, it's better if you use your phone, but if you have to on your computer, um, you can split your screen and play it on there. So on your phone or in another window, um, you can go to kahoot.it. And I usually just type it into Google. <clears throat> So you'll get a screen this way that looks like this, changing colors and it's fancy. Okay, and it's backwards to you guys right now, but that's how it looks. And then on your phone, you can type in your pin, which will be coming up in a second. Okay. Oh, geez. So that's the pin, you type it in and then you type in your nickname. Uh, Carissa, mm -hmm. when you go into Google, then where do you go? Kahoot.it. Okay, thanks. So if you haven't used Kahoot before, it's just a game. Um, it's like a trivia game. So what I've done is the trivia today is based just on BAI verbs. Another minute, just in case anybody else wants to join. So each question is worth a thousand points. The faster that you answer a question, the more points you get, but only if you're correct, obviously you're gonna get the points. Um, and then the winner at the end gets bragging rights. All right, so I'm gonna start it up. Um, if you don't make it in right away, it will display the pin the whole time, so you can jump in at any point or in case you get kicked off or something, it'll be there. All right, so nine people got that one right.
Any, anybody have any questions before I go to the next one? Okay. All right. Okay, so Nanate bleeding right now. Next question. Be close. So the scores update in between each question. It's fun. Ooh. Oh, this is a little tricky for some people. Gaggle Molly Queen equals don't cry. That is true. Question number four. <laughs> All right, pretty close. So, Mama Da, let's cry. The kids are being just crazy and then they want to drive you a little more nuts. So, they're like, let's cry. Oh, and Nantig's still in the lead. Okay, this one's a trick question because I forgot to change the verb. <laughs> so actually translate, you all don't lie down. <laughs> Well, don't lie down, not fall down. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so it should say gego bunga shin gego, not jinga shin. Good job, me. <laughs> um, but that would be the answer gego bunga shin gego. So you guys still got it right. Oh, Nateg's still in the lead, but being followed very closely. Okay, question number six. Hmm. Good job. So in Bungishin equals I am laying down. That is not true. I didn't get my verb mixed up that time, so we're good. Yep. Oh, Nanate got knocked out that time. All right. Somebody named Chris has a nice streak going, too. Question seven. Let's not lie down. All 
I did it again, you guys. <laughs> it's the wrong verb again. Translate, I am not sad. <sighs> Can you tell I was not new on this? <laughs> All right, so it should say I am not sad, not happy. Kawi nimane dunzin, I am not sad. Oh man. Yes, keeping you on your toes, Donis. <laughs> Guys, I can see he looks of confusion, like that's not right. <laughs> All right, question nine. Question. All right, Bungashin does not equal I am laying down. And I think that was the second time you had that question, am I right? <laughs> I don't know what happened here. I think maybe my last edits didn't save. But anyways, third place. Second place. And first. <laughs> you got fourth and fifth there. Okay, now how do I make it? There we go. <laughs> Donna says, not errors, but comprehension checks. Keeping you guys on your toes. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so the last thing I wanna talk a bit about is um, tense. So in the Nishnah Bamoen, you have your main verbs, right? And then you can make them past tense or one of the many types of future tense. So today we're just going to focus on he and we, but here are the rest of them if you are interested in learning those now or in the future. They're there. Okay. So I'm going to use them up a bit as the example. Um, when you are conjugating your verbs, it's not always ne. Okay, sometimes if it starts with a b, if the verb starts with a b, you would use nim. If it starts with a D, J, G, or Z, you would use nin. If it starts with a vowel, you would use nind. And I don't know why the O isn't on here, but if it starts with an O, you would use nindo, okay? Or gid and gido. Okay, so it's just a little change. If you make a mistake spelling, it's not a big deal. Um, it's to make the way you, that you talk flow better, okay? So you can see over here on the example of past tense, ningi, because there's a G, we use nin instead of ne. Ningi namatab, ningi namatab. Okay, so I was sitting, ningi namatab. So gi is past tense. Nin namatab, present tense. Nawi namatab future tense. Now we can either mean will or want to. I will sit or I want to sit. Okay. And then if you are saying, using it for you, you were sitting. You are sitting. You will be sitting or you want to sit. So if I wanted to say you want to sit, ask the question, you want to sit. She or he is, she or he was sitting. He namatabe. Namatabe for she is. We namatabe. She wants to. Um, for they, gi namatabe wog. They were sitting. Namatabe wog. They are sitting. We namatabe wog. They want to sit or they will sit. Okay, so those are just really um, basic use of tense. And then you can also use it, um, I just did a different verb to demonstrate how to use it with something that might change. 
done in Shabin when there's initial consonant change. The rule is over here. There is no initial consonant change if the verb is a soft vowel followed by a hard consonant, i.e. E, he canoe So this G does not change to a K in this case. Whereas because Bungashin has a soft vowel and then a non and then a soft consonant, it would change. So Ingi Pungashin, it changes. Okay. And you know, like if you write a B, that's okay. You know, it's not the end of the world. This is something that you're learning as you're going. Okay, Ingi Pungashin means I fell down. Mbungashin, I'm falling down. I don't know if you want to yell that as you're going down. Mbungashin. Okay. Nui Pungashin, I will fall down. Or I want to fall down. I don't know if you want to fall down. <laughs> okay. So if you do have a letter that needs to change, these are the changes that will occur. A B will change to a P. A J will change to CH, a D will change to T, a G will change to K, and a Z will change to S. Okay, so those are the changes that you might see. Um, you also see this sometimes at the end of words, depending what community you're from, right? Somebody might say a D sound more like a T sound, and that's okay. It's just how you talk in your community. So are there any questions about that? I have some examples on the find it. Okay. So if I wanted to say she or he fell down, how would I say that? What do I need here? Just e. oh. Honey? <laughs> uh, gi. Gi. Bungishin. Bungishin. Gi pungishin. Gi pungishin. Okay. So I didn't put the letter changes in there because when you retype it, you can just put the P instead. But I mean, if you're going to take this document and want to use it, you can add in the letter changes as well. I used to do that with my students when they had the physical copies um, and they would just lay the letter over. They would take the P and put it on top of the B and then I would know they had the whole sentence. Okay. How about I was not sad? I was not sad. Gawin. Gawin. Then one and them. And C. So when you read it, remember that that. Change it to the N. Yep. The M changes to an N right here. When you add your ending, if you use an N, you can throw that on there as well. Okay. You won't fall down. You won't fall down. So this is a good one if uh, you were playing with a kid on the playground and they're a little scared and won't fall down. Let's try, right? What I say you won't fall down. Start with the verb. What verb do we need? Oh, I see Kate's guess got in the chat. You almost got it there, Kate. So, Gawin. 
This is what Kate wrote. Knowing. Okay, so what do we need to change? Yep, you would change the B to a P. Not to, yeah. So you, the gig on the front, the person always goes before the tense. Gilly, punkishin. Okay. And because this ends in an N, we're going to use Z. Okay. If you use an N on the end. Okay. So the person always goes before the tense. So gilly, you will, because it's galene, that makes it negative, so you won't fall down with that negative ending. Does that make sense? Right. Okay, so that's those. Um, tense can get a little complicated sometimes. So those are the two main ones, right? And remembering those personal prefixes might change and remembering those letter changes if you need to do them. Um, but if you don't do them, it's not the end of the world. I think a first speaker is still going to understand you. Okay. All right. So that's all I have for today. Um, if you would like to submit a feedback form in order to get a certificate, oops, you can do so. I will put the link in the chat and I will also put it on our Facebook event page. So that's the link for the form. So all you do is fill it out with your, um, the name that you want to appear on your certificate. So whether that's your English name or your Anishinaabe name or both, you can put them on the form and we will send you out a certificate by email. Okay. And if you, know, if you get a certificate, those are great to put in your portfolios or to show uh, maybe your boss that you're continuing your learning as you're sitting at home. It's always helpful. Okay, so that's there. I will also put the form link on our Facebook page so you can use it there. And if you need to get a hold of us, there's our emails. Or you can always inbox us on Facebook if you use Facebook. So just start trying to practice with your conjugations if you're not already doing it. Um, you'll be amazed how quickly you learn if you just focus on a few of them. Mm -hmm. right. So the recording of this session will be put on YouTube and on our website, so you can always come back and watch it again if there's something that you want to 